Hey everybody, this is Mike with Enviroscape LA and thought I'd do a short video here on the house of sustainability. This is my house in Redondo Beach, California. I live by LAX Airport and just wanted to give you a little tour. Um, yesterday we had a sustainability event here and now we're at, uh, uh, now that every the huge crowd here yesterday, everybody's gone, but I had a, a request from a lot of people over the internet that they really wanted to, to kind of see what we had going on here. So first off, I'm going to show you, we have Pongos Waterfalls right here. These are the kind of uh, thing they have at Disney World, uh, Epcot Center. Um, they've got uh, it, water. It's, kind of, it's a recirculating uh, pump that's in there, so it really doesn't waste water, but it does feed uh, birds and butterflies, so it attracts the beautiful things. I have a... Uh, Aloe bear. This is an aloe tree. A tree aloe is actually going to grow into a tree. Oh, who says that aloes don't look pretty? Look at how beautiful that is. Um, got a recirculating uh, fountain right here. It actually has a, a, a brown tone to it. I have a, a couple back there that have dark tones to them. And lo and behold, I've actually got this vertical garden. It actually holds 20 items. So the idea is I have tomatoes growing here and they're going to grow up. Here and last year, they have got over 500 cherry tomatoes from this thing. Fabulous thing, Los Angeles Power Garden. Absolutely love it because it's the world's only system that actually recycles water. Uh, air, it's a, called an aeroponic system. Over here, I've got more uh, pondless waterfalls. You can see here's our front door right here. Um, I'm, I'm standing on the entrance to my house. And we've got uh, waterfalls, and these waterfalls do the same thing, they're just a bigger version and um, do, have done over 30 years worth of landscaping here in the South Bay. But well, one of the things that we've really noticed is that uh, with the, the G, GMO issue, genetically modified uh, organism uh, issue that's cropped up with our food, uh, a lot of people requested organic gardens. And so I went ahead and, and started installing them. Uh, we figured out how to do them with using very little water. Here's an example over here. This is a... <laughs> street I live on and here's the sidewalk we actually built these raised planter beds we used part of redwood here and this is actually lettuce I'm going to let it go to seed and it's going to get actually we can get a close-up of this here actually has pretty yellow flowers how many of, how many of you knew that lettuce actually has pretty yellow flowers so this is actually it's not ornamental I, I actually eat from this but I'm going to let it go to seeds and enjoy the flowers um, have a tomato plant here and lo and behold I'm really into high antioxidant foods. These are blueberry bushes. Isn't that great? Um, so you can see the, all the tons of blueberries on this, uh, the acidic soil here. We're actually going to put this in my shakes. That shakes every morning. This is a Arbutus marina tree. And actually, here's where it gets its name from, strawberry tree. Actually, it has edible fruit. If the birds don't get it, I do. And I put it in my shakes every morning. It has the world's most beautiful bark. Uh, look at that. Beautiful, red, smooth, shiny bark. Fabulous thing. Uh, we really enjoy, I love cycads, I love encephalitos, so I've got those planted throughout. I've got um, the aeoniums over here. Uh, check out this plant, this is a very rare type of aeonium. Uh, it almost looks like a cactus, it's got all these little, got these guys right here, but it's got miniature versions of it, little head, little heads growing out of it. Really, really cool thing. Um, I've got synthetic turf uh, on the parkway, and then over here, follow me over here, I've actually got this recycled tire product called FlexiPave. And the nice thing about FlexiPave is that it actually allows water, groundwater uh, recharge and infiltration, so when it rains, it goes here instead of out to the street. Follow me up here, I'll, I'll show you one of the things that was interesting was uh, when we built the house, I was actually thinking that I was going to take this concrete out, and I thought, you know, why break up concrete, fill up more of the landfills, when I can just color the concrete? So that's what I did. Uh, the house is kind of warm tones, and so I went ahead and we, we did this uh, organic spray that actually turns it dark. Fabulous system. And so I did that along all the driveway here, and if you follow me here around uh, to the back, we're going to see some really amazing stuff. Um, by the way, the front yard is all drip irrigated, so it's drip irrigation. I water it just a few, uh, uh, maybe a dozen times a year in the hot summertime. And now we come to the backyard. This is where the real essence of sustainability is. 
as you can see on my garage, I've got this monster solar power system. So I actually give back all the pumps I have running all the time. I actually don't consume electricity. I actually put it into the system. Now today is Feb the beginning of February, and these are my. This is my little backyard farm. It's an, an aeroponic system, uh, vertical gardens. And where in February outdoors do you actually see uh, tomato plants growing? in my backyard and so I eat these for dinner every night uh, oh let's go ahead and catch Ellie Mae over there <laughs> we've got our resident peacock right around over here there she is with her beautiful um, with her beautiful uh, green neck ah we've got to get her she just <laughs> looks like she she comes around uh, what's funny is uh, we don't see peacocks around too often uh, in my part of town but for some reason she knows this is a house of sustainability so she just loves it here. Uh, let me take you back, though, to the, the aeroponic gardens here. Uh, it's a great little system. It has 20 planting pockets, and uh, these things just go and they go and go. Uh, this I planted all this from seed about a month ago, and it just exploded. Over here in the back, I eat kale. I, I have a shake, couple shakes a day. I have kale shakes, and this is my kale tower. This is about two months old. It's just massively huge. And we put, well, actually, I put an automatic water fill in here, but it actually has water in there, and uh, the water recirculates. It goes on 15 minutes, off 15 minutes. A friend of mine created something called the Rolling Planter, and uh, we're currently working on this. We're going to turn this into the world's smallest aquaponic system. We're going to have goldfish inside. We're going to have floating islands on top. It's going to be a really great thing, but we're working on that yet. I'm also experimenting with solar power. Here's some, some solar lights. Uh, this whole backyard lights up. So on top of the solar on top, I'm actually experimenting with the solar powered lights for landscaping. Works great. And so I'm going to keep everybody posted on that. Uh, following me back here, I've got a little tiny uh, hydro system here. This isn't hooked up yet. Um, I've got this foodie system here. So that's cranking out the water too. Same principle as, as the other one. Got the strawberries in the pots. Um, right here, um, where I'm standing on right now, this 10 years ago used to be America. It was uh, actually uh, uh, in the whole United States, there was only four natural swimming pools in the United States. This is one of them. Now there's only three, unless there, another one was built that I didn't know of about. But I filled this in uh, a couple years ago with rainwater harvesting tanks. So when it rains, uh, in LA, we on average get about 14 inches per year. I will fill up the bottom of this with 5,000 gallons of rainwater. It's a fabulous thing. This kind of shows you how it works. Um, this I also have it from the house, but the rain falls on the roof. It comes down here, goes through here, goes into the, our um, rain catchment system here. Um, this is actually the rain catchment system. If you want to see rainwater from the last time it rained, there it is, rainwater. Uh, there's raingoddess.com uh, makes these. You can get them on the internet. Uh, here's a uh, one of my first homemade aeroponic systems. Um, we just filled this this old container up that I had, filled it up with water. Uh, put this I call it the pyramid garden. Uh, put this together. Put a little pump that actually pumps water from the bottom, and it goes around like this. Goes on for 15 minutes and off for 15 minutes. Little more about, oh, let's get Ellie Mae again. There she is. Hi, Ellie Mae. <laughs> She's wondering what all the, what we're doing here, what the excitement's all about. <laughs> oh, she loves it. Okay. And let's throw Kiwi in here, too. He's, he's, uh, he's my little guy, little Pekingese. Uh, been our old faithful. Uh, had him for about 15 years. So, okay. <laughs> now we got a little animal commercial in here. Let's go back to the sustainability part. This is, uh, we're expecting rain tonight, or so they say. So I've actually got my pump down here uh, so that when it rains, it catches water. This is rainwater here. And then when the pump goes on, it actually pulls this rainwater. And in the summertime, it, it actually waters uh, the plants, the plant materials here. Uh, used to have a big pine tree here, and it died. So I cut it down to a stump. I actually used to do my computer work out here, and then the trunk eventually just 
disintegrated, so we put some rocks here. I still come out here with a computer, work here, but this has no irrigation to it, so look at how pretty that is. And um, over here, we've got the native plants. I turned the, the rainwater harvesting water with this little waterfall when I have it on. Great thing to have. And then over here, I have a koi pond. And it looks like the koi are starting to spawn because you can see the proteins in the, on top of the water. It was kind of interesting uh, time for them. They're, they're going into their spawning period. Oh, and this, by the way, is a floating vegetable island. You can see this thing. It actually, I planted it, and I don't need to water it, obviously, because it grows, it sucks water from the bottom and nutrients. And lo and behold, it's, it's doing its thing. So, beautiful koi there. Water's a little brown because of the tannins from the big tree. Uh, we have here a our vegetable garden, and we have our girls here. Look at this; she's the size of a pigeon, and they're tearing up my little uh, what I had. I planted here a bunch of chard, but hey, uh, they're digging. They got to eat too. Um, so here's my chickens, and typically they're in the in the uh, pen. Over here, I've got some synthetic turf, and I've also got a, a uh, beautiful uh, air, uh, aquaponic system. I built a koi pond. Here's, there's actually koi inside the water here. Ah, and now every 15 minutes it turns on for 15 minutes, and then it turns off. Uh, look at the size of those roots. Man, and that's just, that's uh, no soil. It's all air and water, air and water. Just amazing the, the stuff that you can grow with fish, uh, fish fertilizer, we'll call it. So I'm back here, I've got my pride and joy, believe it or not. Um, I've actually got the world's first organic garden, soil garden that recycles water. We put pond liner, we dug out this area here, we put pond liner underneath, and there's a little pond pump, and once a day, this actually turns on, and it floods this kale garden, and then it goes off after two minutes. Well, it catches the water that goes in here, and it runs it back into the sump. And then, uh, here's the sump right here. And then, uh, the, how to aerate the water, I stuck a little fountain I had laying around, so she just, she's constantly just aerating this with tiny little pump. And then I have, uh, this just does its thing, but it's the world's first organic soil garden that recycles water. We, we have now have that technology, so there's no excuse not to save 95% of water when you're growing vegetables. This is the bomb. So we're gonna see how it looks. These are uh, things called woolly pockets, and they're, they're great, but the thing is that they, yeah, well, you water them, and then they, when, when they water, it actually kind of wets the wall, so it's not really the best thing for you if you are if you have wood, for example. So try and incorporate more food. Here's uh, banana trees. These actually produce real bananas. They're really great thing. And my chickens, too. People ask me, if you're, if you're vegetarian or vegan, why do you have chickens? Well, because I give the eggs to my neighbors, but I use the chicken poop in our soil gardens. They're a fabulous thing. So uh, check out this... Check out the chickens, they're just kind of doing their thing. Um, there's, there's the girls. They can sense it. There's, the forecast is for rain, we hope so. LA's having a really bad drought, worst <laughs> drought in history actually. So, um, just have to show you how cool this yard is. The, um, the chickens come, they aerate, they dig for worms, they kind of, they, they, they cultivate the ground. And so it's a nice thing to have. It just nature, just working, everything working with everything. Uh, check this out. Uh, tomato actually found its way here into this uh, princess flower. So I let the vine grow up and it looks like a tomato tree. <laughs> well, literally, it's, you could call it a tomato tree. So I have fruit right here. I, I'll pick this tonight and I'll eat it uh, in my salad. I've got the solar power right here, so this whole area lights up at night. Um, 
I've got pond filter mat. Uh, that big ash tree next door just unloaded a, a ton of leaves and so, so on. So I put pond filter mat here. It lets the water in, but it doesn't allow the, the leaves to, clean, to uh, uh, mess up my uh, thing. Let's get one more shot. We've got Ellie Mae here. Let's end, end this with Ellie Mae. Uh, she's kind of become our unofficial mascot. And um, hope you enjoyed this tour of uh, the House of Sustainability. This is really, a, 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 it, it's taken a, a long time to get it to, to this point. Doesn't look a, like a scientific experiment. This place actually looks beautiful. Wish you could be here with us, but uh, we're gonna have our next event next uh, uh, in a month, May 1st, from 2 to 4 p.m. So if you're in the LA area or close to it, might be worth the drive next month. Uh, Mike Garcia from Enviroscape LA signing off. When you think sustainability, think Enviroscape LA.